now we have the uh, empty cells actually being empty, we have a lot more flexibility with how we can control the Excel graph options. You can see that we have these gaps in the data, um, although I did comment in the previous video that maybe we've lost apparently some data in here. What we could do is change the options now for Excel as to how it deals with hidden or empty data. So empty data for us at the moment, I've just clicked on select data, clicked on the hidden empty cells option like I did before. It is interpreting an empty cell as a gap, so it's not plotting an empty cell. I could tell it to interpret an empty cell as a zero. This is what it was doing before, although it didn't con wasn't able to control it before because actually it didn't realize there were actually empty cells, but I could tell it to do that. And you can see when I click OK and OK again, this graph has gone back to the way it looked before, but we've established this is probably not what we want. But do notice though that Germany does have a bit of data here. It goes up and it goes to zero because we didn't collect it perhaps, then it carries on. So looking at the other option we have for the empty cells, select data, hidden empty cells, I could tell it to connect data points with a line. What I think this is going to do is if it's got data points like this one in Germany uh, and the, there and there, it could join up the ones where there's a gap in between. It's not going to join up things if it doesn't know if it doesn't have two sides to join up. Let's see what it does though. There is a problem with this too. Click OK and you'll see that look for the gap here and here, which are obvious at the moment. When I click OK, watch what happens. Uh, this is looking much better as a graph, but there are some problems. The, the Germany data is now here, and the career data is just cruising through that gap. But it is not obvious to someone who doesn't know where this data has come from that actually the ha there is no data about Korea here. Like that's that's invisible on this graph, and maybe that's fine if you know that's not a problem. But maybe that is a problem because maybe actually people want to claim exactly what happened in 2006, but we don't actually know. There's some interpolation, some sort of guesswork between these years happening. And maybe we should make that clear, but maybe it's nice to have these smooth graphs without having funky gaps in them. We can make it clearer, and to do that we're going to change the chart type. So I'm going to do that, I'm on the design tab again, click on change chart type, uh, and it's showing me the options like I had when I first created it, but this time I'm going to use a line with markers. The difference here is that the same lines are existing, but they've got little dots on where the data has actually turned up. So you can always see a preview by hovering over it. I'm just going to click OK and see what it looks like on the screen. There it is. You can see the lines haven't changed, but that where a data point has been plotted, there's put a little blob. And this is good because it's showing us where the gaps are. It's not making it super obvious, but you can see the career, which has no data in between 2005 and 2008, doesn't have any blobs in here. So if someone did care, they could know that this is just the line joining 2005 to 2008. We didn't want it to go down to zero because it probably wasn't zero, but at least there's an indication the data is missing there. And the same thing's happened in this German line here. So maybe this is a nice and sensible graph. We've dealt with all the sort of funky ups and downs and made it look more realistic, but we've also indicated where the data is missing. And notice there's a lot of obvious data still missing that it's not even interpolating because it doesn't know what happened at the beginning for the United Kingdom and Estonia, for example. But at least we have some valid comparison. Uh, and you can start to make some observations now that the United Kingdom didn't do a lot of recycling, but has overtaken um, Estonia, which briefly overtook it, and then eventually has overtaken the United States, but is still a long way behind uh, some European countries like Germany and Austria and Korea, which is uh, doing quite well from starting very low. All that stuff aside, we should do some prettification. Maybe we should give it a title. You can just tap on the title and maybe give it something informative. Recycling comparison might be a decent way. You can mention a time series. Yeah, as long as a label is helpful, I think it's good. Um, it's rather obvious, although I could label the horizontal cat category as years, but it's pretty obvious. What I would like to do is make sure the, the left-hand axis is fine. So if I click on, uh, I don't know, format axis, uh, I did a right click there. You can see all sorts of options turn up. In particular, there are some text options. Um, and if you click on labels, maybe these sort of things, you can do all sorts of things and change the scales. What I'd like to do is actually deal with having a label on it. Confusingly, it's quite hard to find a label option if you've clicked on Format Axis, which is what you maybe expect. Actually, the easiest way to add a label, I think, is actually just to click on the chart somewhere, and there's a little plus icon here, uh, and I can choose some axis titles. You can see this is quite useful. I can even go into deep. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick one axis title. Let's gonna let's get the uh, the vertical. I don't really care about the horizontal. It's obvious these are years. The primary vertical label is good. That now exists over here, and I can double click in there uh, and just select that and say this is a percentage of recycling. And I think this is now just the cosmetic uh, adjustments that make this time series graph quite useful. There is quite a lot of work after you've made it to make sure it is correct and dealing with the way you want to present the data, and that's something that's worth practicing.